In this video, I'm going to go over some um, information about using methods in Unity. Um, you've already been using methods a bit when um, you create a button and have it to um, run, or when you use the start or update methods, those are built in. But I'm gonna be showing you how to make custom methods inside a class and um, uh, use them in a couple of different ways. So for a setup right now, I just have a basic C-sharp script. I have it attached to my script um, object here. And everything that I'm going to do today is just going to be displaying to the console. So the first thing I want to do is just kind of point out some of the, the basic things in a method. And if you notice, we've got our start method that's already built in there. Um, a method consists of a few things. One of them is the return type of the method. Now, start is built in and notice it says void. That means that the method will not be returning any value to somewhere else. And we'll be talking about that in a little bit. We have the name of the method and then we have parentheses. And inside those parentheses, we could pass in parameters. Now the start doesn't take any. Also before this, we could put an access modifier. And today we're not gonna be talking about um, those that much. Um, this is sort of optional. If you don't have a, an access modifier, this will be private and it can only be used within an access within the class. So just to keep it simple, I'll be leaving those out for now. And then we've got curly braces and everything we want to run is inside of our curly braces. So let's, um, do some examples and that's kind of the best way to deal with that. Let's do a very basic method. Now we're going to use start to call our methods. Now methods are something that won't run until they're called or run. Um, so we'll use that. That one start runs automatically. So I'm going to go here and make my new method. Now how about we want to make a very basic method and it's just going to write a greeting. So what I can do is I'm going to say void, which is the return type. We're not returning a value. It's just going to do something. Let's say I want to call it greeting. Now, um, usually what you want to do is name your method something that it's going to do. And in this case, um, it's just going to write a greeting. So how about it just does debug log. Hello. Okay, so it's pretty basic. If I run it right now, nothing will happen because start runs and that'll run automatically, but greeting will not run unless it's called. So what I need to do is call this method and I would do that by writing the name of the method and I do need the parentheses. And what that means is when it says this, that means run this, okay? So if I hit save and jump over to Unity and run, it now says hello. Okay, so that is one of the most basic of um, methods. Okay, so let's take this a step further. Right now, this method really isn't doing much. Let's make a method that will change the greeting based on what parameter I pass in. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm still not going to return a value. I'm going to still leave it void, but I am going to allow greeting to accept a parameter. Now I need to declare what type of uh, information is being sent in. And essentially I'm creating a variable here. So I'm going to say string and I'm going to go ahead and use a variable called name to greet. So this here is a parameter and it will accept a value and then I can use name to greet inside of here and it will contain whatever I sent in. So if I wanted it to say hello and whatever name I sent in, I can simply put that here and I can add a plus and, oops, and add name to greet. So if I pass in a name, it will then go into the method and it'll say hello, whatever name I sent in. 
So notice now this is giving me an error because they need to match. If I have a method that has a parameter, I need to call it with a parameter. So what I could do is go ahead and just write, um, for instance, Susan. So I can hard code a value as long as it matches the data type. So in this case, I'm passing a string into name to greet, which is a string. So if I run this, it runs greeting with Susan, passes it in, and says, hello, Susan. So let's, I'm going to save and jump over to Unity and run this. So notice now it says, hello, Susan. Okay, so let's go back here and I can pass in different values. So for instance, I could run greeting to Joe and I could do Stan. Okay, so now we should say, hello, Susan, hello, Joe, hello, Stan. Save that, jump over to Unity. So notice each time it takes the value I pass in and runs it with the appropriate value. I can also pass in variables. So let's make remove that. And how about I have a string, let's go username, Mike. I can pass that in by doing that. Okay, so now I have a variable called Mike. It's in username. I'm passing username in. When I send it in, inside of greeting, it's actually referred to as name to greet. So what I'm passing in is stored in name to greet, and it deals with it inside of there. So this example passes in a parameter, but it doesn't return any value. And what I mean by that is um, when you have methods, they have their own variable scope. So if I have a variable called, for instance, name to greet, it really only exists inside of this method. And if I create string username, I can't use it outside of start because it's created inside of there. Um, I could create a variable outside of the methods and in the class, and then I could see them across all of them. I'll be doing a different video dealing with um, variable scope in a different class. But for now, if you can imagine, each section essentially has its own area and memory, and they don't talk very well. So we need to pass things around, just like we passed a value into the parameter. So we can return a value. Let's uh, do a different example. I'm going to remove this. Let's do a uh, method where it will square a number, as in it multiplies it by itself. So I'm going to have this method take a number in, do what it needs to to it, it'll multiply it by itself, and return the answer. So since this has a return value, I need to declare what type of value it's returning. And in this case, it's an integer. I need to name my method. I'm going to call it square it. And it's going to take in, I'm just going to call it um, number. Okay, and our methods need curly braces. Now notice it's giving us an error because we haven't returned a value yet. Um, so it'll the error will go away once I return something. So I'm getting this number in, and let's go ahead and make a new integer that will hold the squared number. And I'm going to step do this in two lines. It could be actually in one, but I'm just going to go ahead and do this in um, in two, and then I'm going to go ahead and calculate that. So the squared number will equal number times number. Okay, so it will take the number that is passed in, it will multiply it by itself and put it into a variable called the squared number. And then I am going to return that value. So then what I do is I just type re the word return and what I'd like to return. 
and notice all the errors went away there. Okay, so up and start. Now this isn't gonna run until I call it. Let's um, pass something in. So what I can do is, um, let's say I am going to store it inside an uh, integer. Let's call it answer. And the answer is going to be, um, I'm going to take square it. And let's say, let's square the number 5. So that should return 25. So what it's going to do is it runs this, square it 5, puts it in here. It will take 5 times 5 and it will return the value. Now when things are returned, it returns it right to the spot where you called it. So in that case, 25 will go into answer. And right after that, I can go ahead and, and the answer is, answer. So what it's going to do is it will run square it with 5. It jumps down here, passes 5 in a number. I have a new variable to contain that. It returns the squared number. So 25 will go back up here. It goes into answer and then it continues on just like usual. Oh, let's go ahead and run that. Okay, there it is. The answer is 25. Now the thing with methods is that I could um, run square it on different things. It'll take care of it in one spot and return it. So if the um, calculation, if it was something where the calculation would change, what's nice is you can have it in one spot versus having it in a whole mess of different spots. So let's have one more example of how we could use methods. Um, and I'm going to just keep track of uh, some apples and check our Apple status. So start is where everything is running from, and that's where we will call our different methods from. And we're going to have a couple of different methods down here. Um, one of them is going to keep track of our apple count, and the other one is going to remove apples as we eat them. So if I want to be able to use the variable apples throughout different methods, I need to put the apple variable in the class but not in the method so it can access all of them. So I'm going to do that up here. And let's say I start with 10 apples. Okay, so how about the first thing I'll do is make a method that will um, tell us if we're out of apples. So I'm going to make a method um, that will return a string and it's going to give back a method a message that we still have some apples or we need to buy more. So I since this is returning a value, I need to say what type of value. I'm going to say string and let's call this apple count. And I'm not passing any value in here. I'm just checking to see what the status of the variable apples is. Now inside of here I need a little bit of logic, so I want to see if the apples are greater than zero. If apples is greater than zero, I kind of like spacing a little bit, then I can return a message Okay, so what that would do is it would actually return a string of we still have, and it'll say how many apples we have. So how many the value is. Otherwise, we need to buy more. So if we are at zero, we need to buy some more apples. So let's go up here and um, check our apple status. So I'm going to do a debug log up here. Notice we don't, we're not writing to the console down here. We're just sending what to write back. So I'm going to go a debug, debug log. I'm going to go ahead and put a little label there. 
Apple status. Okay, app and Apple count. So what's going to happen is we're, when we run this, apples will be set to 10. Start will run and it's going to try and write apple status, but it needs to run this apple count method first. So it'll do apple count, go here, and it'll check our apples greater than zero. And if it is, it's going to return we still have and how many apples we have. Otherwise, if it's zero or less, really, it would say we need to buy more. And that message will essentially be put right here. And so it'll say Apple status, we still have you know 10, or it'll say Apple status, we need to buy more. So let's try that out first. Let's hit save. So now it says Apple status, we still have 10, which makes sense because we didn't remove any apples yet. So let's do that, but let's do that in another method. So let's go ahead and add a method that will allow us to eat apples and say how many apples we want to eat. So in this case, the return method is void since we're not returning any values. We're just going to be removing apples from the count. And let's call it eat apples. And I want to pass in how many apples to eat. So that would be an integer. And I'll call it number to eat. And this could simply be apples equals apples minus number to eat. Okay, so I'm not returning any value. This is actually working right on that variable that we set since this is, in, this is still in the class, so it's working on it directly. So in this case, let's same sort of thing. Let's go here. So we've got our apple status. And then how about we eat, eat apples. Let's say we eat two apples. And then let's check the apple status again. I'm going to go ahead and paste that in and see where we're at. So it should say 10 and then it should um, then say 8. We still have 10, we still have eight. Now another thing I could do is inside of here in the eat apples, I could say um, you ate. So I could essentially do a status of how many you ate just to um, make the log make more sense. So let's check this out. So we have 10, you ate two apples, we have eight. So let's check this again. Let's just change this a little bit. So I could go eat apples, let's say a five. Then we ate, how about two more? I need to do an apple status. So we have 10, we ate two, now we have eight. We ate five, we ate two, now we still have one. So as you can see, we can have the um, Methods take care of some functions for us. It does some operations on things. And from start, we're simply calling the methods to run things. And in some cases, we are returning values. And in other cases, we're doing things simply in the method itself.